job of the Department of Defense is to keep America safe from our enemies. But we can't do that if some of those enemies lie within our own ranks. Well, folks, that is General Lloyd Austin, now Secretary of Defense at his confirmation hearing, promising to root out, quote, enemies within the United States military. I didn't know we had any there. Well, apparently, he says he's keeping that promise, announcing a 60-day, quote, stand down for the entire military so commanders can address, here's another quote, extremism in its ranks. And you know that's the left's definition of extremism, not ours, right? That announcement came yesterday, but it's apparently already in the works. Two days after Joe Biden's inauguration, members of U.S. Special Forces were told they could be removed from the Army if they connected with certain images associated with extremism or white supremacy. These are our special forces. They said that if they're caught wearing, buying, or selling anything with images on that off-limits list, they'd be chaptered out of the Army, potentially face investigation by the Department of Homeland Security and possibly arrested. These are men and women who are willing to die for this country, and they're being threatened like second graders. The goal is to frighten all members of the military into submission. They named all kinds of extremist groups, by the way. What I didn't see named was Black Lives Matter rioters or Antifa rioters or even Islamic extremists. Those groups have caused far more damage in America than any right-wing extremist group has, and yet left-wing violent groups are ignored in this. Political persecution has now reached our military. Joining me now, two-star general, chairman of the National Guard Association of the United States and adjunct general for Arizona's National Guard, Major General Michael McGuire is with us. General, thank you for coming on the program. Thanks for having me, Grant. Appreciate it. Sir, how concerned are you about this? Well, I'm both concerned and confused about uh, Secretary Austin's headline. have not seen an official implementation order for this stand down. Uh, in the past, we've had stand downs for safety mishaps or uh, suicide prevention and sexual assault and harassment. Um, and I'm also confused uh, about uh, introducing political discourse internal to the ranks as we have remained the vanguards of the Constitution and apolitical uh, since this country was founded. So I know that members of our military certainly must have political views of their own. It's America. They're more than more than allowed to have political views of their own. I have not heard many instances where this kind of political discord inside the United States military somehow is affecting battle preparedness or its ability to do its job. Have you? Well, I can I just give you anecdotal information. I've been in a command billet for the last 15 consecutive years from the lieutenant colonel level to now the major general level. And in those 15 years of command, I've never had to decide on a case for either discipline or final disposition for uh, extremists or uh, insider threat domestic terrorists. You know, um, General, I used to work in mainstream television in Dallas, Texas, and I remember having to go to Fort Hood on multiple occasions to cover the trials of Nadal Hassan and, and the devastation that he did on Fort Hood. And there were multiple warnings about his ties to Islamic extremism inside the United States military. I didn't see any mention of Islamic uh, extremism here, which then has me thinking, they only concerned about one kind of extremism? Well, I haven't seen the actual order from the Pentagon, uh, so I don't know exactly what it's going to say. So I'll, I'll not discuss the idea of what ideology is being targeted. I'm broadly saying that any soldier, airman, sailor, marine that's exerting their uh, constitutional right to free speech off duty, uh, we do not inject ourselves in, in that way. And we, we understand that each of them takes an oath of office or an oath of enlistment. They take that obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I couldn't be prouder of all of them for the way they've served. And I just don't think this is the way we should treat folks that have served proudly uh, and are thanked in the airports daily. I'll tell you, if you're a member of the United States military and you supported Barack Obama or Joe Biden, I'm still grateful for you. You may disagree with me on where I stand. Do you think, last question, General, 
Is this an effort simply to root out people who possibly support President Trump, conservatism in general? I don't know that. I know that uh, we have to take all threats seriously. And as I mentioned, anecdotally, I have not seen the insider threat problem exist or be persistent in the military. My biggest fear is the long-term effect on this great all-volunteer force that we form and the suppression of thought or speech. Uh, and I just can't imagine putting these young soldiers and airmen in a position where they have to uh, voice their opinion in some kind of a formal capacity. We've remained apolitical. I've served for over 30, 33 years as a commissioned officer under seven presidents from both parties. So I just am totally unfamiliar. That's why I'm confused. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are thinking it's just absolutely bizarre and mo most importantly, troubling. Major General Michael McGuire, thank you so much for your service to this country. And, and we sure appreciate you coming on the program today. Appreciate it, Grant. Thank you very much. Absolutely. You know, he mentioned all.